Dr. Jeff, if I can just ask a couple of questions, uh, mostly about your background and how you got to where you are. Um, we were kidding around, you know, you have a, a, a lot of degrees, you yeah. know, uh, Columbia, Rochester, George Washington University, and Brooklyn Tech. Which yes, is, yes. But um, how did you get to this calling in life? How did, where, where did you realize, you know, among your journey that this was it? You know, I grew up in a, uh, in a neighborhood where, uh, in Crown Heights in Brooklyn, and uh, we were one of the few black families at the time, and eventually became more uh, integrated, of course. Mm. Um, and the school that I attended, St. Francis Xavier in Brooklyn, uh, I was one of the very few black students, one of the first black students uh, in that school. And it was very interesting how some of uh, the kids uh, in the school, my colleagues, um, they, very, were very kind to me, of course, uh, and I don't think they wanted to uh, act in a prejudicial or racial way, yeah. but, you know, they would sometimes make fun of me be, uh, because my color or if they were reading a textbook and the word Negro was in it, uh, they'd turn around yeah. and look at me. Um, and so I started to realize that race was an issue in America when I was very, very young, but I immediately saw it as some sort of a mental health issue. Uh, in other words, how is it that you can judge a person by the color of their skin and not the content of their character? What was it about a certain person's skin that made them different and they were treated in a different manner? And I just immediately tied that around the psychology and sociology of our society. And that's when, you know, that at so eight, nine years old, I was into psychology. <laughs> So you were you were making assessments when you were eight or nine years old about your classmates uh, about my classmates. <laughs> but here now, here's the important thing, Brian, is, is I didn't make value judgments about them. Sure. You know, as to, well, they're racist or they're prejudiced. I looked at the behaviors which were racist and prejudiced and try to put some meaning behind it. Why did they behave in this particular way? Because these were really, I mean, these were children. Yeah. And so therefore they were innocent. So when they would use the N word and, you know, would say very derogatory things about people of color, uh, back then I think they called them Negroes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because I was born a long time ago. I was going to say you're dating yourself. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I am my own wife, but don't get me started. <laughs> um, it just, you know, it, it just, for me, it was not about getting into the blame game. Yeah. It was more about understanding why people behave the way that they did and getting to know who they were. It's a very pragmatic approach, very impressive approach to do that at such a young age. One of the things I noticed too is that you have um, a PhD both in psychology and philosophy. Yes. And to me that was interesting. What made you bridge the two and, and how do they intersect and, you know, in your studies? And A lot of people ask that question because uh, I guess what a lot of folks don't uh, realize is that a PH, most PhDs are doctors of philosophy. Mm -hmm. uh, PsyDs are doctors of psychology. So by getting that PhD, yes, doctor of philosophy, but practicing um, psychology. Uh, and which is why I'm glad that they came up with PsyDs and you know uh, other degrees now. Um, that really speak to the experience of psychology and not just the general philosophy. We can go anywhere with philosophy, <laughs> right. but certainly with psychology, it really is about the, the working mind uh, and certainly how people interact with one another as part of our society. Sure. No, that, that's, that's helpful. Now, you have a jammed up calendar. I was, I, I won't, oh, I'll move the camera yeah. for a second just to show. That is a whiteboard full of a million appointments. You see Penn State, you see all these different talks, everything. Yeah. You, uh, you have books, you've authored several books. You're, you're on television a lot. How do you juggle all of that? And what work gets you the most excited? You know, is it your practice? Is it, you know, what, what is it that get, gets you up? Well, I like to say that I'm busier than a one-legged man in a butt kick. <laughs> but that's really the way that that's I like great. it. Uh, from the morning, I, you know, from the, the, the hour I wake up in the morning, which is extremely early, you know, get the workout, you know, spend time with the kids, uh, and then come to work, put in 12 hours a day, sometimes seven days a week. Uh, it makes for a very exciting life because as a psychologist, I'm really blessed that I get to do 
so many different things uh, that are so opposite of one another, that are so unpsychology, if you will. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Of course, having a great intern, Zaire, who you all will be meeting in the future. Yeah. Uh, and we take you over from Brian. No, no. <laughs> um, okay. You know, that really helps having that kind of help. What am I excited about? I, look, I, I don't want to sound Pollyannish. I, I'm excited about life. I'm excited about, you know, being, you know, part of this planet. I'm excited about America. I'm excited about uh, immigrants. I'm excited about spirituality. I'm excited about my children. I'm excited about women and ex especially the woman that I, <laughs> you know. Thanks for clarifying that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, I'm just excited about everything. I'm just so happy to be alive. And that's part of my philosophy in working with different people. Let's let's just thank the creator for all of the gifts that we have. And let's thank the creator for the life uh, that we've been given on this planet. That is a lot of, a lot of energy and a lot of good talk. Um, we have one question just on something you mentioned sure. before. In your younger years, what conclusions did you reach to help you understand why other children were so racially biased? Uh, and I like that term, racially biased. <laughs> right. That's really great. Right. PC that's, term. Yeah, that's no, and it, and it's and it's really it's a very good term. Um, the conclusion that I came to was that if you don't know a particular group of people or race of people or religion, you know, people around a certain religion it's easy to get into the us versus them mentality. It's easy to get into stereotypes, especially when those stereotypes have historically been put around those people. But once you get to know them, once they become your neighbors and your, you know, your, your classmates and your colleagues, it's just amazing how that really dissipates yeah. all of that stuff. You know, I have to share with you, uh, I live um, you know, on the weekends in the summertime, uh, on a uh, private beach, and I won't name the place. But, <laughs> well, um, we're going to do the broadcast. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't want the bill collectors coming. <laughs> why, why aren't we right? filming from there? Yeah, exactly. Next one. Yes, next one. Yes. And uh, we were one of the first black families there, and um, many people were friendly. Some were very standoffish, but I can tell you now, um, when we're on that beach, it does not matter what color you are or where you come from. We were all family. And yeah. that came about because we just spent time together, living together. Um, a lot. Of, I'm not. I, I'm not a, a Trump supporter. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to put him down, but I'm not a Trump supporter. Mm -hmm. Some of those people there are Trump supporters. Even the politics don't divide us. We are able to speak about our belief systems. We are able to speak about politics in a very respectful way and this is where i think we really need to go we need to spend time with one another which is why uh really you know integrating and diversification all of those things are very very needed in order for us to increase our social skills and increase our social iqs and to really spread that love and to respect one another race sexuality whatever the case may be yeah no look i mean uh i grew up in queens so uh, you know mm -hmm. I, I, there was no opportunity for us to to be in an environment where people didn't get along you know everyone's there right um but you, you mentioned something that's interesting um and, and i've seen other interviews um where you've said um hey you should get a mental health checkup mm -hmm. and this is a little bit yeah. off subject but i'm going to bring it back to sure. to what you said before how how does that work? I, get, you, I heard you say, well, look, you always go to get a physical. Why wouldn't you go to get a mental health checkup? Well, one of the things that we do know, Brian, is that um, there is correlation statistically uh, between your mental health and your physical health, right? Yes. So if you have poor physical health, you're going to have poor mental health. You have poor mental health, poor physical health. Great mental health, great physical health. Great physical mm -hmm. health, great mental health. So when you go to see your physician, and most physicians should be trained in that way, we try to train them here at the Turo College of Osteopathic Medicine, where we're doing this broadcast from. Uh, we train our physicians, our, uh, in, our medical students, uh, as future physicians, to be able to look at a mental status, to look at what's going on with a person as far as any mood disorder, any drug abuse issues, and so on. Mm -hmm. So if you're feeling really stressed out, if you're feeling a lot of anxiety, if you're feeling depressed or suicidal, it's important you just pick up the phone and talk to a mental health professional or talk to a family physician who 
people get you in touch with a mental health professional. If you are not feeling well physically, we call the doctor. So if you're not feeling well emotionally, psychologically, right. call the doctor. Right. It's right. okay. It's the same. You idea. know, yeah, we're in 2017 now. Yeah. So, you know, get the cabeza checked out because <laughs> that is the command center that makes everything else well. There should be no shame in your game if you're dealing with some issues, mental health issues, mental health disease, or even problems of living. We all have them. And I've said this before, and I'm going to put it out there, and I'll say it often. I have hypochondriasis, which is the fear, unreasonable fear of illness. I have generalized anxiety disorder. Um, I have obsessive <laughs> compulsive disorder. I have all of that stuff, but I talk about it because I want people to know that if I can admit it as a mental health professional, then certainly you should be able to talk about those issues. I live with it every day. I get through it some days more difficult than others. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's about fighting for your sanity. It's true. That stigma has to go away. And I have a, a question right on point, too. Someone asked, um, what do you think about current initiatives to integrate behavioral health with primary care? And I think, uh, yeah, yeah I, I think that's, uh, that's absolutely terrific in the direction that we need to go because a lot of uh, our primary care physicians are on the front line of yeah. seeing patients who may present with mental health issues. And the important thing here and why this is such a great question is um, we don't operate in a vacuum, especially when it comes to illness. So if you have a mental health illness, that may be part and parcel of a physical illness and vice versa. Therefore, your primary care physician may be the first person to see it. And that doctor can then say, okay, let's get this person to a psychologist or a social worker or a psychiatrist. Maybe we need meds. Maybe, maybe it's about therapy. You know, let's see what we can do. So yes, let's integrate and, um, this, this, these services. And we need to get our physicians up to snuff on understanding what some of the mental health um, challenges may be. Sure, great point. Um, there's one more question, Dr. Jeff, uh, on this topic. Is there ever an age too young to get a mental health checkup, presumably if there are signs where there's some uh, some challenges there? Sure, I, look, I, if there's some sort of a genetic issue if a child, uh, for example, is experiencing autism, uh, we know that there are some great behavioral techniques that are out there. Early intervention, um, if the child has some sort of cognitive deficits, let's start working with them early. A speech issue, let's work with them early. So I would say, really, you know, it's never too young to begin addressing the mental health of an individual. Um, and the earlier you make the intervention, the better that it is because we are resilient. This is the way the creator has made us, but we have to get uh, the systems within our own bodies working, get them jump started, and that can happen with uh, a very qualified uh, expert in behavior or um, medicine. Great. Well, we've got more questions, and, and but I know that we're kind of a little bit jammed on time. I do want to, I'd love to at some point, do some subsequent broadcasts on um, I, I wrote down all these different topics that I know you're an expert on, from <laughs> bullying to sure. how do I balance being a good spouse and a good parent mm -hmm. and um, meditation and so much more. But um, for, for this, I just wanted to take 15 minutes and let our community know uh, a bit more about Dr. Jeff and obviously more will be coming. Can, uh, and I've had a question already on this. Um, can you give us uh, a little information how people can learn more about you or reach you for engagements or even seeking assistance? Sure. Well, you know, you can go on Google and find my name up there. Uh, go <laughs> to uh, drjeffgardere.com, D-R, no period, D-R-J-E-F-F-G-A-R-D-E-R-E. -E -E. You can go onto my website there. Uh, I'd give you my phone number, as I've done in the past, but if you call, I tell you, look, if a woman answers, hang up and call me later. Uh, <laughs> but the website should give you all the information. And Brian, I think we're going to make an announcement that... Uh, uh, I'll be seeing our wonderful viewers and yeah, engagers of the uh, internet uh, very, very soon, and we'll be doing some more things yes. uh, where I'll actually be hosting and taking a lot of your questions, all the questions you have about mental health and about life and about what's going on in this crazy world and making making us sane in this insane world and <laughs> dealing with all the anger that's out there. And divisiveness. Ah, 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 yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. And so... We are going to teach America to be kind again.
all you'll have to do is join me. And so we'll have more for you coming up on that. We really are going to have a good time. I was going to say we're going to have a blast, but that's not appropriate with terrorism no, and all of rough, those things going week. on. Right. So we'll just have a good time and get some great information out there. Dr. Jeff, this was awesome. And everyone stay tuned to uh, zubialive.com or zubialive.net and look, and you're going to see some scheduled broadcasts with Dr. Jeff, uh, a lot of them coming up in the future. So thanks so much for your time. It's a pleasure, Brian. Thank you so much. Cheers.